let's start Windows Vista now and see what we get during the startup process. I have put a virtual boot DVD in this computer, so I will press a key to start that. Let me move that screen now back over here where we are. The Windows Vista startup screen begins. It asks us what language we'd like to use, what language to install, time and currency format, and keyboard. We click Next. And on this screen, instead of installing Windows Vista fresh, I would like to repair my computer. And once I choose that option, it already identifies all of the other partitions available on my computer that have Windows Vista on them. After the search is complete and it's found my Windows Vista partition, I can click Next. And I get a lot of different options here. So here's the recovery options for me. I can do a startup repair that does a quick check of your startup files and recovers and repairs anything that might be going wrong with those. Or I can use System Restore to use the built-in system restoration capabilities that can go back to a point in time using those built-in restore points in the operating system. I can also do a Windows Complete PC Restore, and that is going to use the files that I created with the Windows backup process. So I don't have to have the operating system actually working. I can simply boot from the Windows Vista DVD installation media and get to this point and then restore my backup to the hard drive. As a CompTIA Plus professional, you may find yourself needing to get to the command prompt of the operating system and really fix things down at a very, very, very specific level. When it comes to that, you're going to want to use one of these capabilities, the Windows Recovery Console or what we call the Command Prompt in Windows Vista. These are very, very powerful command line utilities that allow you to get down and do anything you might need to do at the command line. They're also very dangerous. You can delete files. You can disable very important services. So it is very possible to make things worse at this command prompt. You want to be sure you know what you're doing in there. They have different names. Windows XP calls it the Recovery Console, and Vista calls it the Command Prompt. It's in those system recovery options that we just looked at. But it is essentially the same type of front end. This gives you complete control. So you're in at the operating system file system level. You're changing files, modifying files. Uh, changing things with services. You get a lot of control. And you can fix these problems so that they don't occur when the operating system finally starts up. And notice all of these things, changing disk configurations. You can change partitioning. You can write system files. You can disable drivers, enable services. You have a lot of control down here. Let me show you how you would get to this command prompt option under Windows Vista. This is the Windows Vista System Recovery Options. This is the same screen we were just looking at with the Startup Repair and System Restore and the Windows Complete PC Restore. You'll notice there's also a really nice Windows Memory Diagnostic tool here as well. Sometimes you're never quite certain if it's a new or upgraded memory that's causing your problem. The thing we're most interested in is this command prompt. So this is the command prompt that you would be accustomed to seeing and using if the operating system was all up and running and everything working perfectly. So you can make changes to this. You can look at different files. You can see what's in there. Uh, you can type out what's in there. You can modify files that happen to be on the hard drive. You've got a lot of control here. So now you're able to get down at that level, make the modifications you need, and then be able to restart the operating system with those. Let's see how we do it in Windows XP. It's a little bit different to get to that recovery console. Windows XP is a similar scenario. We are booting from the CD-ROM for the installation media. We'll hit a key to boot from the CD. And our installation program starts just like we would expect for Windows XP. During this startup process, we're going through the same screens that we normally get if we were going to install Windows for the very first time on a system. But obviously, we are not going to reinstall Windows. We're going to start the recovery console. When you start up this setup program, you can see your options are to set up Windows XP Now, press Enter. To repair a Windows XP installation using the Recovery Console, press R. Or to quit, press F3. Well, obviously, we would like to start up the Recovery Console, so I'm going to press the R key. And it says, this is the Windows XP Recovery Console. The Recovery Console provides system repair and recovery functionality. And you press Exit to quit the Repair Console and restart the computer. And then it will show you the Windows installations on this computer. And there's only one, which is number one. And I'm going to type in number one for that C colon backslash Windows. And then it asks me for the administrator password 
for this particular computer. So you do have to have the administrator password to be able to do this. Otherwise, you could walk around with a Windows XP CD and put it in any machine and boot up and have access to this computer. So that guarantees that you will be able to get into this system and securely access the files that are here, and then do whatever you need to do to be able to modify files, change driver configurations, service settings, and much more. Let's review the information we've gone through in this very big module on these different boot options. Our first question is, where can you configure the boot device order? So if you wanted to tell whether you wanted the hard drive, the floppy drive, the CD drive, or perhaps the Pixie configuration to start first, you do all of that from the computer's BIOS. Once you get past the point of booting, perhaps you need to start the advanced boot option. So the next question is, what key do you press during that, that operating system boot process to get to that advanced boot option screen. And if you recall, that's your F8 key. The last question is, what piece of information do you need to enter the recovery console? You just can't start the recovery console and have complete access to the computer. To be able to get that far, you're going to have to have the administrator password for that computer. Well, that covers our requirements for this 22701 section 3.4 on disk boot order and boot options. If you'd like to look at any of our other free a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards and much more, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.